Welcome, friends. Thank you for taking a, a few minutes out of your day to be with me as I share the word of the Lord. I'm reading today from Titus chapter 2, verse 11. And St. Paul says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. The word I would like us to especially focus into is that word grace. And we notice as we listen to Paul here that grace is multi-purposed. It isn't simply that thing by which God saves us. That, of course, is an enormously important thing that grace brings about in the life of those who believe in Christ. Again, he says that for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation. It reminds us of what Paul will say also as he writes to the Ephesians, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And so he's connecting this grace with the fact that we are people who are forgiven of our sins and have received the gift of everlasting life. But we also see here that grace is something that God uses not just for us to go to heaven, but also he uses it for us to live our Christian lives. And that's what he goes on in verse 12 to really talk about grace training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. And I think that's just a way for us to understand that grace is something that we need every moment of every day. It is by grace that we will make it into the next life and live in the presence of our Lord Jesus. And it is by grace that we live day by day in this life, uh, living in the ways that God calls us to and staying away from those things that he would have us avoid. And it is God's grace whereby when we do fall short as we live here in this world, and we will and we do, it is by God's grace that we are forgiven again. So during this Holy Week, as we consider especially the suffering and death of Jesus and look ahead to his empty tomb at Easter time, we are mindful of his grace toward us. His grace which is sufficient for you and for me and for every person of this world who looks to him. And for that, we thank him and we praise him. Let's pray. Lord, as we think about grace today, we thank you that by it we are saved, we are forgiven, we receive eternal life, and that by your grace we are people who are enabled to live for you as your dearly loved children. We need your grace every moment of every hour, and so we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this amazing gift, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.